So hello and good evening. This is Ruth Pasuelo from Curval.com and today is time again for another DAX Fridays. And these DAX Fridays is something that you asked me to do and it was to go through Max, Max X and Max A. I thought I actually had this video but obviously not so I'm doing it now. Before I start I actually want to ask you a question. Um, I've been uh, hearing from you, some of you, that my intros are too long and I would love to hear your thoughts about it. So a poll is going to pop up on your right, right hand side. Just take the second, it's just yes or no and I would really appreciate it. It will help me make better videos and listen to your feedback. So uh, take the two seconds to answer that quick poll and let's begin. Okay, so as usual, let's go through what Microsoft says about this function, the max x, no, max function. Uh, it says it returns the largest numeric value in a column. Or, this I didn't know actually, or between two scalar expressions. That's quite cool. Uh, so it returns the largest value in a column. That is quite intuitive based on you know the name of the function max. So with that you have to use a column, not an expression. I'll show you. And also these that I didn't know, you can actually compare two expressions, and it will give you the max of those. I'll show you in a, a little bit silly example, but you, you you will see the the point. Yeah, it will return a decimal number, and. Uh, if the column contains no numbers, Max will return a blank. Okay. And well, you have here some examples with no actual data, so they're a little bit difficult to rasp. So let's go to Power BI and test Max. Okay, so we are here again in Power BI and we are using the North Wind database as we always do. Link below. Uh, if you want to know what this is, but this is basically a free data source for playing with data provided by Microsoft. So what we have here is a list of products. We have our Queso Cabral is always here, of course. And um, we have a measure that says total sales. So we've just basically calculated the sum of sales. Nothing strange there. So how would we use Max? I think the most... Um, the easiest example for a max is to see what was the highest sell we've ever had. So we go in here, set max sales, and then we put max. And then if you would try to put here total sales, sorry, total sales, no, that's the column, the expression, you know, the measure, you're going to get an error. So max only allows for columns at least when it's just one argument. So here you have to put total sales, uh, total, uh, total sales, okay. So total sales, but for a column, okay. And if we put that, we would have the highest sale. Let's put it as a card. So we see it a little bit better. Uh, data level, nope, you. So, and let's do some. Hmm. So you have it, 6,000. So what is this 6,000 value? Here I have actually a table with all the products and all the dates for 1998 and their products. And it is sorted by sales. So the highest sale ever, it was in 1998 March, and it was for a value of 6,050. And this is what you are actually seeing in there. Okay. Um, so you might think that, oh, cool. So if I put max sales in my product table, it would give me the max sales for each product on each day? And the answer is no, it won't. So if you click on here, this would be so much easier with this table matrix, you know, <laughs> to, to make samples. So if you click in here, you will see that the max sales was 3,400, which is true. But if we go to the next post, we already see that it's not giving us the same, the right results. Uh, 
So to do this kind of calculation, we actually need to go row by row on the date calendar and pick the max date of that. And for that, you use max x. So max x is uh, max x again. And then we will go through all the values of our calendar. In this case, I think it's called And now we will calculate, we will see which one of each row of the date calendar has the max value of the total sales. And once when we put it through the product name filter, it will actually give us the correct result. As you can see here, now it's giving us the result that we expected to have. Okay, and max is used for all kinds of things. It's used for uh, returning uh, like last values or for example, last date when you are actually using it within the ex a complicated expression. I, we, I will have to do some example, so it's not even worth it to talk about it. Um, but we will do it in another video. So as you can see, it's working beautifully. We're getting always the max sales. Now, what's the deal with max A? And max A is not a function that I have ever used, to be honest. So I've looked it up. So here we have it. And for what I understand with max X A does is it allows you to give you the largest value in a column but for like for example max and max x is for numbers and dates max a it extends that to other types for example if you have a date time if you use date time with max x or max it won't work so you can use max max a with max a also is it allows you to evaluate true and false conditions okay so if you have uh, I don't know if you're doing a more complex evaluation and then you have to see if, if it's true or if it's false. So if it's false, it returns a zero. If it's true, it returns a one. I don't have a good example for this. So I will do a max x a video once I've come up with a, a, a good example. If you have a good example, by all means, please let me know and I will showcase the your example in, the, in a future DAX Fridays video. I do not have... A good example right now and I'm running out of time for the Dark Fridays video so I rather explain it in words and if you have a, a, a great example just please shout it out to me and we will do a video so there's one more thing before we wrap up this video and it's this I had no idea so it was really cool that I had to come here and check this out so with this max expression expression does is let me show you we're going to go here we have a new measure and we put max so you cannot put max and a measure as you saw in the beginning of the video but what you can do is to have expression and expression so two expressions so two measures so I have a very stupid example that uh, has nothing to do, it's not a good example in, really in real life. I will try to find a better one, but it's just because I didn't know, it just stumped me a little bit. But just to demonstrate what it does, for example, if we do max x and then we put here total sales and then we put here, I only have two measures here, so I'm going to put the average unit price. So let's say that for whatever reason, that is a bad example again, but we would like to compare these two measures and we would like to get the max value of both. And if you are doing more complex calculations, this could be like super useful. I just have to figure out a good example to show you. But just so you can see, so this is going to compare total sales with average unit price and give you the max of both. So if we just put it in there and for that, I think let's move these things 
around a little bit. Of course, average unit price is going to always be lower than total sales just in this case, but either way, just so you can see how it works. So it's actually going to go through these two values and it's always to give you the highest of both. It is super cool. I had no idea that this thing existed. So good. I, <laughs> I'm, the purpose of this was that you will learn and I will learn. I'm learning a lot. I can tell you that. So this is really cool. So again, also, if you have an ex example of uh, how these, uh, for these uh, max comparing to expressions, uh, just give me a shout and I will feature it also on a future DAX Fridays video. I, just now I just couldn't figure out anything on the top of my head and I have like an hour left to DAX Fridays. <laughs> so uh, I, I think it exemplifies what it actually can do. And you, when you run up the scenario that you actually needed, then hopefully you will remember it. But uh, yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is all for today, that's Fridays. Please, please remember to go and click on the poll. I would really love to know if my intros are too long. And if they are, a follow-up will come to see if I can do a longer outro. The thing is that it just makes it more entertaining for me just to go here and, and give example and, and exit. It would be like death worried to me. And I have to do this a little bit entertaining for myself too, to actually manage to put that much content in a week. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Uh, but perhaps we could find a good compromise where both you and I have fun. <laughs> Anyhow, yes, it is Friday. You're probably finishing your day. I am not. But uh, I will see you again on Monday with another video. So take care, have fun and enjoy your weekend. Oh, oh yes. And, you know, like, subscribe and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Bye.